So in my previous video about Proxmox boot drives and what type of boot drives work best and how much endurance they have, I said that my home server, which had two USB sticks and a mirror, had never had any issues with those USB sticks. Well, they've had issues now, so I'm gonna go into my process of what happened and how I fixed it and all the little issues that I had along the way, as this is definitely not an optimal solution for a boot drive in Proxmox. So firstly, a little bit of background info about this. So I'm using a Sun X3-2L. It's a dual socket 2011 server made by Sun. It was designed originally for, I think, for heavy storage with four of those Sun F40 SSD drives and 12 hard drives on the front in my model. I'm guessing it also has two two and a half inch drive bays in the back that are designed for boot. And all the drives plug into a SAS um, RAID card and that would put the drives in RAID and you could boot from that. But I swapped that RAID card out for an HBA so I could use ZFS better. And now I can't really boot from it in my setup. It likely is possible, but I just didn't want to set that up. And that really doesn't leave me with many other options for booting. I could really either boot from USB or the single SATA port on the motherboard that's designed for a front DVD drive, and from what I can tell, there's really no good way to power it either. So I really was only left with USB sticks as a good solution. Luckily, this server has two internal USB stick slots, so you can put them in and enough space for the small little USB drives. I went on Amazon and got some cheap SanDisk 16 gigabyte little ones, and have been using them for about one and a quarter years now. I bought them in February 2021, and it's now June 2022. With my estimation of the amount of writes that system was seeing, they've probably seen over 10 terabytes of writes, which realistically speaking is pretty good for a little flash stick. Upon failure, this drive showed some write issues in ZFS, and then after a bit the drive went read only. So it still showed all my file systems and data on it, but I just couldn't modify it at all. Now here's where I'm gonna make this issue a lot more complicated for myself. I wanted to fix this whole system without rebooting it or shutting it down. So I wanted to do it all hot. And that should fully be possible in Proxmox, but the issue is I have two identical USB sticks that look like they have the same file system, one's read-only, and I can't tell which one's which inside, so I can't just pull one of them out. So my only option is to add another USB stick in the back of the system. So I did that, and I put this little 16 gigabyte USB stick that I had laying around that was a nice small size. And it turns out USB sticks need a little bit more performance than I thought they'd have. This drive had about 0.01 megabytes per second Q depth one four kilobyte reads in crystal disk mark. That's also the bottom right one by default too. It's extremely slow in doing random writes. And when I tried to do a ZFS sync, it was showing it in the bytes per second in the beginning, which is way too slow and kind of just hung everything IO wise because it's just waiting for that disk to respond, which took minutes almost. So at that point I decided we're pretty much done with that drive and I got another USB stick. While this one was a lot bigger, it seems like it's heavier and has some sort of heat sink in it, USB 3, and I'm guessing has a relatively fast controller. When I was looking at the crystal disk mark speeds, instead of 0.01, it got about 7 and something, which is over 700 times faster than random writes. So I plugged it into the USB port, and it showed up in the system, and I did the same thing that I did to the other drive, which is follow the Proxmox guide of how to copy the data. So I plug the drive in, I tell it to copy the file system from my working USB stick, which I'm trying to keep track of because it has one has IO and says it works read write and one is read only. So I have to make sure I copy it from the right one. And then I have to use that same utility to set up random GUIDs. So it sees it as a separate drive and make sure that it knows the IDs are different. And then you have to tell the drive to install the bootloader on both of these drives. Now I ran into an issue though with the bootloader where it wouldn't install any kernels on it. So I thought maybe it only installs kernels as you do them. So I did a full update, which should install a new kernel because it's been long enough for me and it didn't put the kernel on there. And from the errors, it looks like it was just running into an issue with that read only drive. As I would recognize it has the EFI partition on it, try to mount that partition and it mounted, but it couldn't ever write data to it because it was a read only drive. And then it would just stop there. I did some poking around in those scripts and I couldn't find anything really easy that was saying which drives were the one there that I could like modify. So the best option I had in Linux was to go into the slash um, sys folder for the drive and tell it to disable itself. So now I have the drive in the system, but it doesn't have like a slash SD something drive letter. It's just in the system. And the next time I'll shut it down, I can take it out by testing out which ones read only, but the drive essentially doesn't exist to the system. So now I can use the Proxmox tools to copy the bootloader very successfully and it works fine. Well, it actually is kind of surprising to me how many writes that USB stick did take. 
as over 10 terabytes is a lot for a 16 gigabyte drive, it still really is far from optimal and you should use a different drive for a boot drive in Proxmox. Ideally, a normal SSD is what you want to aim for, something that from a known brand that's likely going to be very reliable. But if you have to go down the USB route, likely a bigger USB drive is better as it will spread, spread the writes over more NAND flash and the writes are in total rewrites of the flash, not terabytes. So a bigger drive typically can handle more endurance than a smaller drive. One other promising solution is the little micro SD cards that say they're high endurance and made for things like long video recording. I haven't tested these personally, but I'm guessing they're a lot better than a standard SD card or USB stick when it comes to the amount of writes they can handle. This also shows one of the reasons why I kind of like using Proxmox. This is not a really a recommended configuration they have, but I was able to do this fully hot, swapping the boot drives and making it a different mirror. I had one that I had crash part way and stopped. I had to offline a drive and the normal Linux how to do it guides just worked fine for me. And it just didn't really have any issues. I'm glad Proxmox, I can see some of the scripts if I want to. I can use normal Linux guides and I get a pretty good sense of what Proxmox is doing compared to something like Hyper-V that in my opinion is a lot more closed box and it's a lot harder to get detailed info and there's definitely not scripts and stuff you can play with and know as much as you can with Proxmox. While it's great to have a system that just works or support if it doesn't, it's also really nice in my opinion to have a system that if it doesn't work you can pop the hood open and actually be able to play around with stuff and it makes sense. Thanks for watching this little Proxmox adventure I had replacing my boot drive and subscribe for more videos like this in the future.